So now apparently they're all numbers. I'm not getting anything to the contrary. And I still want to look at this upper range. So that's just the range between 2000 and 2100. I want to make sure that there's nothing higher than 2009. I'll sort them. I want to sort by numbers. I want the largest first. And it appears that 2009 really is the highest number. So that's reasonable. Now I should go back and try to figure out what the problem is with all the records that are on the other side of the range. So maybe before 1900. Some of those look reasonable. I would have to ask Alex, what do you expect to be the oldest record in your database? And then I would work on the ones that seem to be older. And I'd go back to the specimens probably and figure out what their year was. So right now, I've done most of what I'm able to do to clean this up. However, I do notice that there's a zero value in the year field. And I'm curious about that. So I'll explore the year again, but this time as text again, to see how many values are zero. So it looks like in his spreadsheet, he uses zero as a default value when the value is unknown. But strictly speaking, that's not the year. Strictly speaking, there shouldn't be a zero in there. That's his decision to make, but now it's my database. <laughs> so I don't want a zero in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change all of the zeros to be blank. So I'm going to erase the zero and apply it. Take a little time because it has to do that to 3,110 of them. Come on, Refine, you shouldn't take that long. I stopped it. I don't want to wait for it. I'm impatient. <coughs> that is the method that you would use, nevertheless. So now, I'll get rid of this facet again. So we've looked at two of these, the first two kinds of facets. And let me describe this, the third one and the fourth one. The third one is a timeline facet. What that does is create a calendar, essentially, of years. And it orders the values as if they were dates. And allows you to then use a scroll bar around dates. We could do that if we explored a date field in Alex's database. I don't know if there is one. I'm not going to look for it now. In your GBIF databases, there is an event date. It's the Darwin Core field event date. And you could use that and play with the timeline facet to look at that. OK. Uh, what I wanted to do here is to show how to combine facets. So suppose I'm interested in the year 2009 for sure. So I select a text facet. Mm. 
I'm suspicious now. Let me check something. Uh huh. I'm suspicious. Sorry. Oops, oops. Okay. Back into my project. I wanted to select the text facet. And I'm interested in the year 2009. So here's one way to get that. Include all of the year 2009. Now, within 2009, I'm actually interested in something further. I'm interested in which collectors there were in the name string in that year. So I do another text facet and I find out that there were two choices in that year. These two people or these two groups of people actually. This group, the first one, collected only one specimen and this group collected 12. So I can actually go through my data set and say year by year who contributed to the collections. Right? I can build complex filters within Refine, and then I can act on them, and only on them. If I do something to the data now, it will only act in the data that appear here. It will not act on any other data. So now, I want to show you something else. Remember I told you that this is not a database. What it is, is a view on the original data after applying recipes to it. So where's the recipe? What have I done to it? The answer to that is in the other tab. Rather than the facet and filter tab, there's an undo and redo tab. There's my recipe. The very first thing I did was to create the project. The very next thing I did was to mass edit one cell in the column year. You remember, I went in, I selected the year 2965 and I changed it to 1965. That's what that was. And this was the other one that I changed. And so on and so forth. I did it first as text and then later as numbers. So the full history of what I've done. And then I mass edited, it looks like it kept the values. Remember it was it was churning and churning and trying to change all the zeros to nulls. So apparently that made it onto my recipe before I stopped refine. So there's the whole recipe. I can go back to any point in the recipe that I want. And say, I was a goof. This was a big mistake. I need to go back to here. Or maybe I just want to look at it at that point. So I do that. And now, I still have my view of only those 13 records, but this is before changing all the zeros in year to a blank. Okay, so I can move around. The other nice thing about this is I can create a magic recipe for how to deal with Alex's database. If I follow those steps, boom, 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 I will turn Alex's database from one thing into another thing without changing the original data. I can save that. I can store that as a recipe and I can send it to town. Town can open Refine. He can take Alex's data set. He can run the recipe and get the exact same result that I did. Furthermore, if Alex has 10 databases or 10 spreadsheets and they all have the same structure, I can run the recipe on each one. Or 
I can create a recipe to turn Alex's data into Darwin Core for him. And he give him that recipe, and from now until Darwin Core changes, he can use that recipe on his data to create Darwin Core and publish it without doing all the hard work over and over and over again. He doesn't have to change his database. He's got a recipe to turn it into Darwin Core already. So that's something you won't find in most other pieces of software. I'm going to ignore, that is go back in my recipe to this point and ignore all those changes in the column year from zeros to blanks because I decided for some reason that was not a good idea. Then I can go back and continue on my merry way and do other things to the data. So we're in exploration mo mode. Let's look at some more and see what other good things we can do. I showed you one way to look for the year 2009. It's not the only way. I chose text facet and then text facet showed me the whole list of years and then I included the year 2009. There's a little bit easier way in this case if I choose sorry, a custom text facet and I put the value in here, 2009 and select it. Okay, that was easier. There's only one choice. However, it's not showing me the data that I want. It's showing all the records rather than only the one that I thought that I was going to get. And I don't know the reason for that. I will try to figure that out for later. Okay, let's do some more exploration. Let's get an idea of how many different families are in the data set. Looks like there are six different families. They're not all families, but we can forgive him for now. Algae is not a family, so maybe that's not the right field for it. We want to ask Alex, what are you doing? And he says, oh, well, we don't have a field for, in this case, kingdom? No. Where is algae in, is it a kingdom on its own? Yes. Depends on who you ask. But do, does that mean it's in the kingdom of plants? No. It's a mistake. It's altogether an error. Okay. So we've highlighted something that is a problem. Okay. And we also have a good idea of, of the content of the database. So this, all this is to show you about exploring data. and to show that you can use more than one facet at the same time. Okay. Unfortunately, there wasn't much in the way of dirty data <coughs> in the family field. I'm gonna try to look for some dirty data to show you one other thing. Name string has too many options to look at. But I can look at some number of them, some part of them. Let's look at a thousand of the different ones. 